What is up, everybody, and welcome to episode 63 of the Geek Cast. I almost, I almost yeah, slipped. You, you I nearly almost slipped. slipped up. I got to stop with the two shows. It totally messes me up. But anyway, I am Bobby, the Nintendo Guru, joined by my best friend from the UK, Toby. What is up, That's baby? right. Hello, Hello, Toby. Although I got to say, what? There's, there's a contender for a new best friend. In the oh, UK. no. Yeah, this, I got a friend request today, and... I just, you know, I, who is it? Murrin. Murrin, my brother. <laughs> he sent me a friend request today. I was like, absolutely, I got it. I got to accept Toby's brother. Well, and it, it, do you have anything to say to Murrin? You know, first of all, it, it's Murrin. It's Murrin. Get that's it right. Murrin. I said Murrin. 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 That's what I said. People struggle saying it's a name. little. It's a little weird name. It is a little. It weird. is a little weird, but yeah, yeah. yeah. I just want to make sure you get it right. Uh, yeah, because he does listen. And he I does don't, listen. I don't, I don't want him to beat you up because of my mispronunciation of his name. Why would he beat me up? Because you just he likes to pick on you. Because I'm affiliated with you. I Pretty should. Much. I should leave the podcast and just distance myself <laughs> from you, Bobby. <laughs> That's kind of harsh. That's 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 <laughs> brutal. I can't believe you can say something like that. One other thing I want to clear up first, too, before yeah. we get going. Yeah. Karina's not pregnant, right? No, she's not pregnant. Okay. I just want I, to sure. I'm having a I'm having a baby with Sean, though. You know that, right? <laughs> that wouldn't shock me. That wouldn't shock me, dude. That was, <laughs> did you hear what he, did you hear what he said this week? I guess you heard. Um, because because Chelsea's Chelsea's having a baby. Yeah, and. We had a whole little thing on if we were in Nintendo where I was just like, dude, how could you not tell me? Like, you've known for a while. And, and apparently Chelsea was telling him for a while, like, you got to tell Bobby. You got yeah, yeah. like, no, 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 no. So then when we got into talking, I'm like, I can't believe you would tell me that stuff. <laughs> and he's like, well, you know what would be awesome? So it's like, if, to- if Toby and Karina were having a baby and Toby didn't tell you too, if he was holding out on you. <laughs> and I was like, I will kill him. I will kill <laughs> him. Kill. A double so, reveal. Yeah, it would be like, what the hell? Yeah. But uh, so uh, let's kick the show off like we do each and every episode with our geek outs. Toby, what are you geeking out about? All right, so uh, I am a fan of this little indie game that's in development um, called Beard Blade, oh, and yes. they have just launched the Kickstarter today. Oh, really? So I'm geeking out about because there's uh, like new footage and stuff and. All sorts of information about the game. Now, um, basically, full disclosure: you and I spoke to them guys a year ago. Yeah, when they were, when yeah, they were a while like, ago. When they were basically like just looking at compute, like it was just basically a, a Steam type game and all that. Yeah, you reached out to them. I reached out to them. Yeah, I was asking you, for a demo. Yeah, when you were doing Indie Radar. You yeah, were, you reached yeah. out to them. So go ahead. I'm sorry. So um, so yeah, anyway, it's a side-scrolling platformer where you play as this caped bearded man uh, who's got this uh sort of possessed well m- sort of a magical beard that can turn into like a fist and stuff and it's got magical powers uh, i'll read you a little description from the kickstarter page please do it says uh beard blade is an action-packed 2d platformer for pc cur- uh, inspired by 16-bit legends Play as the gallant Branson, a.k.a. Beardblade, as he strives to reclaim the town's stolen goods and uncover the truth behind a dark secret. His weapon of choice, an enchanted beard teeming with ma- powerful magic that allows him to shapeshift his stubble to overcome hairy situations. <laughs> the, the enemies are tough, but so is your scruff. <laughs> so, it's, you know, they've got a nice humor to it. Uh, you know, there's sort of puzzles and and uh, stuff. Like, you can... Go for to those a, for those that are that are listening or whatever, what what would you like in this game too? Like what game? What style? Because it is it's pixel art. Yeah, it's pixel art. It's it's very like sixteen bit pixel art. It, it I don't know. I mean, it's not really a Mario game because you sort of you use your beard to grab onto things, and mm-hmm. your beard grabs enemies and beats it up, like beats enemies up and stuff. Like I don't know really. I mean, it's kind of I don't know. I get a little bit of vibes of Asterix, mm-hmm. but Maybe that's not quite right, but now you're looking at the Kickstarter page now. I'm assuming. Yeah, yeah. Is there any tiers or anything to like get it onto different platforms? Okay, so right now stretch goals are not live at the moment. Okay, um, they said that it's primarily a PC game at the moment, mm-hmm. but 
if I suppose if the the uh, Kickstarter goes well, then they'll think about putting it on console. Mm -hmm. I'm sure eventually it probably will if it's successful. I hope so because I would really I don't play Steam games. I, I yeah. It's just not my, but not my cup of tea. But I of, would love this game. This game, yeah. I'm one of the it. rewards for backing it is a um, you can get a digital manual, but you can also get a physical one that looks like a Super Nintendo manual, mm -hmm. and it's their logo at the bottom. It, it's Glove Box Games, and it's just like the Super Nintendo logo, and it looks so cool. We need to. I, I, I'm going to take this by. I'm going to take this by the reins. We're going to. I'm going to reach out to these guys. I'm going to get them on the show, and and I would love to, do, man. You know, and we can interview them hopefully within the next two weeks. So I'm going to work on that. There's Actually, a demo. As soon as the show's done, but yeah, There's a it's playable demo as well. So if you want to check it out, you can. Yeah, I'm going to check it out definitely. Um, <clears throat> I. You know what? It's funny because like I said, we spoke to them. I think if and if I'm not mistaken, we were supposed to t bring them on the show a year ago, and. I think it was just a matter of it was we we if I'm not mistaken it was they were still really fresh and not a lot going on yeah and very early were, on yeah and they were really developed it was in the early stages of development because it's only like one guy right if I'm not mistaken uh, it's a couple of guys but they're sort of working full time jobs as well yeah so they do it in their spare time when they can yeah um, um I've just noticed on the Kickstarter they say we've largely been influenced by a wa the Wario Land series which I oh, think yeah. actually yeah. is a good um reference yoshi's island and rye star so if you like those games then you might like this absolutely and I, I like i said when i saw it and i saw it a little bit a year ago i fell in love and i actually started following them on twitter immediately and every now and again i'll see stuff pop up and i'm like oh yeah this game is i can't wait for this game and so it's one of those games that are just like oh it's it blows me away like it's yeah. just i love when we get that like retro style like new but retro and, and yeah so I'm, I'm really excited for it um myself i'm geeking out about i finally was able to pre-order the tomb amiibo for legend of zelda so i got them i got the other ones before yeah. and i was able to get these ones so i i, I have all the zelda ones up that, that have gone up for pre-order i have them locked in right now um, the Mario Party ones, I'm not so much really going after that much. Yes, you are, but don't lie I, to yourself. I don't know, man. I I'm gonna when they come out, we'll see. I don't know. I think I really definitely want Wario. I mean, not Wario. Uh, Waluigi. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Boo, yeah, because I'll definitely get. But like the other ones, I'm just like, man, do I really want another Rosalina? Do I really want another Donkey Kong? Mm. I'm kind of starting to like subside on the on like the new ones. Yes, the ones that I don't have. Yes. But you've um, bought you bought variants of the yeah. Animal Crossing ones, haven't you? Mm -hmm. I bought the variants of the Splatoon ones that are right here. Exactly. So what are you talking about? <sighs> I don't know. You're going to get them. I know get, you're going to get them, boy. I know. That's just a sad thing. I got Poochie. I got Poochie pre-ordered. Oh, dude. I, you you awesome. can't pre-order any of them in the UK. I don't that's think. That's crazy. And you guys used to get pre-orders before us. Yeah. That's what's nuts. I, you know, I don't know. I just, I feel like it's like, I don't know. I'm running out of room. I'm like, oh, no, I'm not. Because I got plenty of room, Tony. I can find some. I don't know. It's just You're making excuses. I know it is. I, the money, man. I hate parting with the money. That's the problem. And it only hits the wrong time. It's yeah. like, oh, and they put out so many. Like, dude, just give us like two a month. That's yeah. it. If you gave yeah, us two yeah. every single month. I wouldn't have a problem. Because what they do is they don't release any for ages, and then they yeah. all come out at once. And it's like, yeah, because oh. what, do they got like six or seven going to hit for the Mario Party series? Like, yeah. dude, that's over 100 bucks in, in Amiibo. Yeah. But here's my question to you. Have they talked about Gold Mario coming to the UK? Um, I'm, You know, I'll be honest, I'm not as up on Amiibo yeah. as I used to be. Because well, I've we stopped, stopped, like, majorly collecting them. Yeah. But, like... I, I saw that like they were stocking it in Canada or somewhere, like where it wasn't. Before. It just went back up. It just went back up for pre-order in the United States. Yeah. So, um, but it uh, went I, it went to Best Buy, which was it was a Walmart exclusive before, um, but they're restocking it and it's coming back. So I'm like, part of me is a little upset about that, honestly, because I thought like that was kind of like it made it more special to have that one and now i'm just like oh man like I, and i know that's kind of being selfish but i just feel like that was the one they shouldn't restock because it was gold it was limited it was hard to get 
Yep. You know, I think that they should have put it out in the UK, you know, definitely. But I don't understand why they never put it out over there. But whatever, it is what it is. Yeah. I'm it just, just shocked me the... to see they were, it shocked me to see they're putting that up. Yeah, I'm, I'm just looking on the Nintendo website and I can't see it available. So I don't think he has got it. Especially when it went everywhere. I mean, it went in Japan too. So if they put it out in Japan, they put it out in the United States, they put it out in Australia, why would you not put it out in the UK? That don't make any sense. Yeah. But you don't care because you have one anyway. Yeah, I got one. Thanks to you, Bobby. Thank you. Thank you. I, me, I, was just, I, was, I was just looking for a little, you know, a little love. Um, what are you playing, Toby? All right, so I'm playing um, a little game called Hyper Light Drifter on the PlayStation 4. Why does that sound familiar? Because I mentioned it earlier on in the week. <laughs> oh, okay. That's what you did. That's what you did. Yeah. So Hyper Light Drifter is a uh, 2D top-down pixel indie game. It's an action uh, RPG, a bit like A Link to the Past. People refer to it like similar to that. Um, but it's hard as balls. It is really hard. <laughs> and your character, it's its like the, the story of it is very sort of like you have to interpret it in a way. Like there's no text. It, all the story is told through cutscenes or pictures. So like you talk to a character and it will like show up a few pictures of like what the boss of like, because there's like four different areas. There's like North, East, South and West. And... They have uh, like a an, like a dungeon area to go through, and at the end is a boss. And when you first enter an area, you'll talk to an NPC, and he'll show up a few images of the boss of that area and what he did to like the local inhabitants of that area, like the nasty things that he's done. Like so, that gives you a little bit of motivation to go and take this guy out. So, and it's kind of like weird, but um, you know, it's. It's sort of open, like you can go to three different areas in any order, um, and you can get like different abilities from each area. And as you go around, you can defeat enemies, um, and sometimes those enemies will drop little upgrade points. And when you've got four of them, it turns into one solid like yellow thing in your menu. And when you've got three of these solid yellow things, you can go back to town, and then you can either upgrade the ability to carry more like medipacks. Or you can upgrade your um, weapons, like to like do different things. Or you can upgrade your dash skill. So there's like different like ways that you can change the way your character plays, so, mm. which is quite interesting. So, and it's not it's not like Zelda in that there's like puzzles that require items, like that are like locked off areas. So it's yeah. not like that, but it's very like combat combat focused. So. And it's but on it's, PS4 is where you it's go. It's on PS4, um, it's on PC as well, and it is it's just so addictive. Like normally I'm not a fan of like really like rock hard games, but mm -hmm. this game, like, it's cruel in a way that is not like unfair. You know, it, it feels like you you die because you're just not good enough at the game yet. Yeah. Because you know, you've got all of the abilities there available to you. Like the dash skill is like the main way of avoiding enemy attacks mm -hmm. and, and getting across gaps and you need to just master like enemies patterns like the little tells of their animations like when they're going to attack you and you've got to figure out when to move out of the way when to come in and strike and yeah. you can like you've got guns so you can shoot them from a distance but it's all very like mechanical like because there's not much of a story like a lot of the gameplay is like very based like heavily based on the mechanics all working together in the environments so um, I got severed this week, and I started playing that a couple days ago. I what, did you, what did you get it on? I got it on Wii U. Wii. I bought it on Wii U. Um, it was like thirteen bucks or something. It yeah, was, they had a sale. Like the first week, the initial week is basically a sale. Um, they did it for the entire month. Like they put out a new indie game, and then for that week, um, the game was for sale, and then it would go up to regular price after that. So I grabbed it just before it went back up on price. Um, I'm liking it. You know, it's, it, it reminds, like if you play Guacamelee, right? yeah. so the art style is very Guacamelee, um, but you're in a first person game as opposed to a side, you know, 2D side scrolling game. Is it like a dungeon crawler, like first person dungeon crawler? Yeah. Yeah. That's, you know, you're going through these dungeons and you're trying to basically what happened is your family gets kidnapped. You wake up, you're missing an arm, 
and your family got kidnapped. And your you, arm you, has been severed. Your arm has been severed. And you need to then go out and find your family. And I found the little brother uh, last night. Mm-hmm. And now I'm off to find my parents. But it's really a good game. I, You know, when I first saw this, it was funny because when I first saw this, I was like, this game just looks like it sucks. I want nothing to do with this game at all. And then Sean got it on the Vita, and he was like, dude, you need to play this game. I'm like, I'm not playing it. I care less. And then when he heard it was coming to the Wii U and the 3DS, he was like, dude, you need to jump on this. I'm like, I'm not playing it. I don't. I have no desire to play this game. It's stupid. I'm not messing with it. Because it reminded me a lot of, like, Infinity Blade or or one of these, like, slash games where you just, like, sw- mm. swipe your finger. And it is a lot. Like, the battles are that, but the battles are very technique. It's kind of like Skyward Sword in the matter of like you could be you could be hacking one day one way mm. and slashing, and the the further you bring the slash, the more damage you do. But you also have to worry about like if you start a slash and it's long, they could throw a block up. Yeah. So you might go in tight and do a lot a lot of small damage. But then like I I have I have enemies where they have like four hands right. Or four arms, and they cover up, and they'll cover up like this, right? But this side of the body is open. The right side of the body is open. So then you start slashing, but then they'll move their arms to block that side. But they yeah. open the left side. So then you got to switch to slashes. Then you'll go against. You got to go against other ones that like. But they'll attack too. So then you have like you'll have three or four enemies coming at different sides. So you got one in front of you, one to the right, one behind you. But you'll see meters where they're getting ready to attack. So you yeah. have to constantly pivot around too. To like stop them from attacking you from behind. That sounds quite intense. It is intense. It does get intense. In the early goings, it's like, oh, this is stupid. This is easy. But then as you start getting further and further, it gets to be rough, man. And it's like, oh my god, this is brutal, you know. So, it's, but it's fun. So you're using the stylus, yes, to like do the slashes. So yes. that means you're always looking at the gamepad. Yes, the the it's it's reverse than normal. The map is on the TV. Okay. And I suppose because like your primary focus is on the gamepad. Yeah, you're, you're 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 constantly looking at the gamepad. That's where you're moving and all that stuff. And then up top is a big map. And then on the gamepad too, there's a little map. Like maybe you can see like two or three rooms. But if you look up, you can see the entire map of where yeah. you're going and what rooms are kind of open. Sometimes they show like it's kind of like Zelda ish or Zelda esque, where yeah. you go into certain areas and like you see where the rooms are. But then there's hidden rooms too. So the hidden rooms you won't see on the map, but the minute you break the wall or you get through that area, it it'll start opening up more of the, yeah. of the map and stuff. It's really you would so, love it. So that's cool because that's a unique feature to the Wii U, right? Yes, it's not you can't do that on Vita. Oh no! Well, Vita, it does have the slash because the screen is touch screen. But like um, you haven't got a stylus with the Vita, right? No, you all your finger. So like, it, how weird must that be? Like, well, I think why it's unique is this isn't a PS4 game. This isn't yeah. Xbox One. It can't be on those systems. Yeah, yeah. So, in the, in those terms, it's definitely like I feel like this is the better. Ver- I feel like this version is better than the Vita version. Now I didn't play Vita, so I couldn't. I can't fully say that. But I feel like in what it's offering me, yeah, the ability to see the full map at the same time as I'm playing. Like I just feel like this. It's is just probably- a shame that the gamepad isn't HD like the Vita uh, is because it probably uh, looks a lot nicer on Vita. Yeah, probably does. Probably yeah. does. So that's the other thing that always is a little bother me a little bit. I'm like, man, I wish I could just, and maybe you can, I don't know. I haven't really gotten to the, the options matter. Maybe you can flip the screen. So I'm looking at the TV as I'm playing and the map is down below. But how would you, swiping. you wouldn't really know where you're swiping. Like, cause it's uh, like, it's like if, if you're, um, you know, you're writing a letter without looking at what you're writing. Like so you can almost do it, but yeah. like you end up like doing. Squiggles. Lines a little bit. Yeah. yeah. You're right. You're right there. Um, I think you'll like. I think you should get this game, and I think you would really enjoy it. Honestly, it sounds cool. Yeah, yeah. I think this is right up your alley, especially with like the whole dungeons, and you have to figure out. And it is puzzle. It's very puzzle based. Where you, when yeah. you go into the dungeons, you have to figure out. Like, you'll go in, and you'll have like, you'll have like four red doors, right? And it's like you'll have two that are locked and two that are unlocked, and then you go to the switch, and the switch is like an up and down, and when you f- switch it, it then flips. And the two that were locked now become unlocked. And then, so you have to think like, okay, if I do this, I can go through here, but I can only get, you know what I mean? Like, so you're constantly thinking and you're looking at the maps. And then there's also this thing where you go in and you have to like, it's a uh, sun and moon. 
Yeah. So there's sun doors and moon doors. And if you, it's this big uh, disc and you tap it with your stylus and it gongs and it flips. And yeah. when it flips, it flips the doors, opens the doors. So you have to look at that too. You have to look at it and go, okay, if I, if I hit the, if I hit the sun moon here, switch here, it'll unlock these doors. Well, oh, there's a sun moon switch over here, but you know what? I can't get there through there. I have to find an alternative way to get around. Yeah. So it's very, it's very heavily based. It, it has that Zelda feel to it, but it also has, you know, in, in those terms of like the dungeons, they're really yeah. well done. They're really, yeah. and the battles, like I said, the battle system, you would like that. I think if you like Skyward Sword, you would like this, I think. Yeah. yeah I think I will check it out. Um, yeah. I tell you what else I checked out this week though was the Virginia demo. The heck is that? So it's like um, people describe the genre as walking simulator. So it's like a first-person game, a bit like Firewatch, you know. Okay. Okay. Um, but you play like this. I think you're like a detective in it, and mm -hmm. a, a boy has gone missing, um, and you've got to go and look for him with your partner. Um, but then I think there's also some other investigation that's going on. It's kind of like a mystery thing, but like the demo, um, was just terrible. Like because pe people have been like raving about this game saying it is a really, really awesome game. Like it was reviewing well. Um, but like the demo just didn't do it any justice. Like maybe it's just me, but it was just, it was so confusing. Like, cause the characters don't talk to you. They just like look at you like, weirdly and it's the dem i don't know if the demo is representative of what the game is really like because yeah. there's um you know you start off in this house with like the grieving parents their son's gone missing um and there's like police there and everything and then you you wander into a room and then like you can look at stuff and then all of a sudden the screen will fade and you're somebody somewhere else and then you're, you're in a hotel and then you're having a nightmare yeah. and it's like every time like you think you're doing something real like the, the world changes and you end up somewhere else and it's like you can just like look at stuff but none of it really makes any sense yeah. like and it it ran really poorly as well there was a particular area in the demo where you go outside towards this cave and it's just stuttering all over the place. Like it's really bad. I see. You know what, man? That's it's funny you say that because I was thinking the same thing. Because there's another game I'm playing too, and it's Journey. Yeah. And that game reviewed through the roof too. And it's like I'm not feeling it, man. I'm just like, this is kind of weird. You know, like you're just kind of walking around and you're acquiring new abilities or whatever. But like, you're really not fighting anything. You're you're just wandering around the desert, and it's like. Okay, well, like, what's the point here? I don't get this. And, and the same thing with going home. Like, I, I got going home and I was playing it, and it just it didn't grab me. I don't know mm. what it is with these like walking simulator type games. Like, they just they're not for me, obviously. The thing is, like, I just did, don't you, feel them. did you play Firewatch? I did, but remember, because it was so oh, you it moved, making you me motion sick, sick yeah, because of the and I, I want to go back and play it again, and I probably yeah. will just in shorter. Like yeah. Maybe play for a half an hour and shut it down and go do something else. Because yeah. I love the art style with Firewatch. I yeah. really... And the story was pulling me in. I was definitely... That's what I was going to say. Like, like the Firewatch is a great example of like how a walking simulator can be more interesting. Like, yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be abstract and artsy. Like, yeah. it, it, you know, it's okay doing that. But like Firewatch is has a really gripping story for the most yes. part. Yeah. And you, you know, although you are just wandering around, like picking stuff up and that, but like, it's really about the narrative and the way that the characters interact with each other in that game. And you, there's like none of that in yeah. Virginia. So, and I kind of would like, like I, the other reason I want to go back to Firewatch is it's been a while and I would hope that they did some updates to it. It was real janky. In the it beginning. was really janky, yeah. So hopefully they did some updates I to it. I heard that they did a secret update that added, like, a developer commentary, like, for the whole game or something. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. I didn't know about that. So, yeah, I wanna, I'm want i going to – I'm definitely going to go back to that one and finish that one up. Um, all right, let's jump into our first topic, which is Nintendo just announced the Famicom Mini. Um, and it's actually called the Family Computer Mini over there. Um, my question to you is, do you want it and will you import it if you do? Um, yes, I do want it. Mm -hmm. I think it looks really cool and, uh, obviously it's exclusive to Japan, yes. uh, 
but it just it's kind of cute how it how small it is and how the NES Mini is like it's almost like they're making a collection of miniature consoles. Yeah. And it kind of started with a Wii Mini, I think, yeah. right? And they took that idea and they, they made the NES Mini. So, like, if they take that further and they do a Super Nintendo Mini, like, I would love to have just a, a shelf with, like, all these miniature Nintendo consoles yeah, on. Yeah, I would do. And, you know, I don't know if it would be... I don't know. I was going to say, like, if they would somehow region lock it but i don't think they could because if it's all just built if it's built yeah. into it yeah it's not going to region lock it definitely need lock. A, i probably need a plug converter or something but well that's it, there's a separate adapter coming for these plugs for, yeah. for the system so i don't know whether it's just because in japan they don't offer the 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 plugs yeah i have heard that in the past that japan doesn't do that um it's a usb plug it's an adapter oh okay you know the cord and it plugs in but that's all right then yeah, but but it went up for pre-ordering on Amazon Japan yesterday, mm. and when I went to go get it, it was already sold out. It was yeah. gone, and that was. But I didn't see it till like ten hours later. I didn't even realize it went up. So now my hopes are on Play Asia. I'm just keeping an eye on it. I would, because originally I had said to Tony, I said I'm going to buy two Nest Minis. Yeah, um, for the two TVs I had down here. But now I'm like, well, that's kind of dumb. I'm not going to buy the two. I'm going to buy this Famicom one, and I'm going to buy the the Nest Mini. Just because there are a couple of games, additional games to the to the Famicom one that's not coming to the United States. Yeah, and and, and, s- and some variants like yeah. um, like we're getting Final Fantasy one, but they're getting Final Fantasy three, and it's like yeah, that's weird. But like I didn't realize, I didn't realize. Well, you know what? But they're and that's where the numbers get confusing. Yeah, because my first thought was, oh, they're getting Final Fantasy three, but I was like, that was a Super Nintendo game. They're actually numbering it properly because in yeah. Japan it was numbered properly, so they're actually getting Final Fantasy three, which I don't think that ever came to the United States. Yeah, um, in the forms of like one, two, three. Like I suppose. All right, so if that's the case, they would have to localize it. That's why we got one instead of three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, the thing of it is, like, it's cool to have that. I can't play it because I don't know Japanese. I wouldn't know what I was doing. No, I might just yeah. tinker with it just to see what it looks like and see, yeah. you know, you know, I'm very curious about it. That's that's where I'm at. But the one thing Miguel said to me um was they actually had the speakers built into the controllers like they did originally. Oh, uh, doing that with Zelda. Yes. And that's what he said. Uh, he, You're gonna play Zelda like it was really meant to play. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that's pretty awesome. So because with Zelda, you don't really need to read anything there's not a lot of no. it's not really heavily story driven i mean you know basically what it's like when you walk into the old man in the cave okay it doesn't speak english but everybody knows what he says yeah you know so you, you grab your sword you move on you know and then when you go into the cave where it's like he has three items in front of him it's a store so other, the items, uh, you know? other than the, there's the one enemy pole's voice in mm-hmm. the game yeah. in the japanese version where you had to t- like talk into the controller to like yeah. kill it yeah. and is there anything else like that in the in the Famicom version, or is that it? I think that was it, pretty much. Um, are, and are there any other Famicom games that use that? I don't know. I, I really don't know. You know, it, it's that's why I want one so bad because I just want to see. Th- th- Japan got technology that we never got. Yeah. You know, like because they were basically a year and a half, two years ahead of us because when the, when, well, in the United States anyway, I don't know how it was over in the UK, but for us, so the, the, the Famicom comes out and they're going to bring it to the United States, but the crash, the Atari crash happens and the whole video game crash goes under. So Nintendo wants to bring out a Nintendo console here, but now they're nervous. So they take their time, they, they develop it, they research it, they do all the stuff, and then they started to do like the, that's why they call it the Nintendo Entertainment System. They didn't call it a video game system or anything like that. And they also packed in like the Light Zapper and Rob the Robot and all this different stuff. And when they first brought it out, it went to New York City first. It was, I think they did it in California too, but it was, I know it was in New York City first. It was in one store in New York, very ultra super limited if you could get it. And it was like kind of a, a groundswell of how they started, you know what I mean? And it was then when they actually started to go across the country, it was slow. It was slow to get them across the country. It took me, I didn't get my NES 
took a long time to convince my mom to get us one first off because they were burned by the atari um but when she finally convinced i want to say it was 86 or 87 my cousins had had one in 85 so the famicom came out two years prior to like famicom came out like 83 84 while the nes came out 85 um, and then I, I feel like towards the end of 85 when they went wide, wide range to the United States, but I, we didn't get one until 87. It took us a good two years. It took us after, after we finally got around to buy us one, it took us like almost a year to get our hands on one. Mm. Um, just her saying like, you can get one now because you guys got good grades in school. The, the now finding it was, the, was a chore. And I would literally, she ordered one from a catalog, right? This is crazy. We used to have this catalog, the store called Sears. So you go through the catalog, you you call in, you order the stuff, and then they would call you when it was there, and you went to the store and picked it up. Mm-hmm. We ordered it, and for six months, we heard nothing. And I'm like, when is it coming? When is it coming? When is it coming? And I would call them, and they were like, nope, we don't have any coming in yet. We don't have any coming in yet. And apparently they had a huge list of people that had already ordered before us. So when they would come in, they just go down the list and, call, and order them in or call the people in. And not only that, like they had stores all over the country, so it was just mm. a matter of like hard to, hard to get them. But I would literally call the mall every single weekend and call every store in the mall, asking it like KB Toys, Toys R Us, all the different stores in the area. And one day I called and KB stores, KB Toys had one, and I ran out to my mom and I was like, "Can we go, please?" And she's like. Yeah, let's go. And she packed up me and my brother, jumped us in the car, and, and took us out to the mall. And got and we got the last one that wow. was there. <laughs> and it was like when I called, I was telling the story on Sean's podcast. When I called, they had two, and I'm like freaking out because I asked the guy if he could hold. It. He's like, no, nope, we can't hold them. It's first come, first serve. I'm like, dude, please. He's like, no. Nope. I see you. If you get here, you're lucky. You get us get it. And I, that's why I'm freaking out because I had to convince my mom to be like, can we go? Do you have the money? Let's go. And she's yeah. like, hey, let's go, let's go. And uh. I'm like freaking out in the back seat. I'm like, come on, mom, hurry up. <laughs> Floor it, mom. Come yeah. on. And she's like, if you don't shut up, I'm gonna turn the car around now. And I'm like, <laughs> going nuts. I'm like, I'm like crawling out of my skin. I won't <laughs> and then we get in there. It was the last one they had, and I was like, wow. oh god, thank god. And it was heaven after that. Like I loved every every minute of my NES. And you never had an NES, correct? No, no, I didn't. Your first console was what the Super Nintendo? Yeah. You missed out on some glory stuff. Well, man. the thing is, I'm gonna live it for the first time when I get my NES Mini. So you never, you never owned one at all. Well, I do. I do have a, a an NES now. Yeah. Uh, my my dad got me one for Christmas a few years ago. Oh, that's awesome. And I got um Super Mario, um Duck Hunt, and Gauntlet on it. And that's I think that's all I've played on it. So you never had any curiosity to go back and buy somebody, else? especially like Zelda. You never went back and bought Zelda. No, and no, I've never seen it anywhere. I mean, I suppose I could get it on eBay, but yeah, I've got it on my 3DS. So okay. So have you played Zelda? Yeah, of course. The original Zelda. Not on an actual NES. No, no, I, not on an actual I, NES, I, but I you played, played it the game. Virtual console, yeah. And then Zelda 2, you played that as well. Yes. What? That's hard, man. Zelda 2. That hard. Zelda 2 is hard. Yeah. It's really, really hard. hard. Now, when you play the original, yeah. Because your your favorite game is Link in the Past. Same yeah. with mine. Favorite Zelda game. What it I'm assuming you beat the original Zelda. No, I've not beaten. You've it. never beaten it. Never beaten. it. Totally. <laughs> oh my god! I know my geek cred is going down the, way down the down, fire. Man. I'm losing respect for you now. Dude, uh, you I, know what, right? Yeah. Uh, I will get it and I will beat it on the NES Mini. And you know what will help me beat it? Like the save states and everything. Like, so you're you're. So talented. I'm gonna I'm gonna cheat my way That's through. That's ridiculous, <laughs> man. That you, when we played when I dude straight up, it took us. A year and a half to beat that game. Now yeah. I was younger. Yeah, we didn't we didn't know much was going on, but like we didn't have like you could go on Google right now. You can find mm-hmm. any map you want for Zelda, and it's easy. You know what I mean? We didn't have YouTube where people were doing let's plays. We could follow along and stuff. And like oh, I'm stuck here. How do I get through it? And they could you could watch somebody do it for you. It literally took us a year and a half. I was I had a friend right, my best friend Dave Maxwell. His uh his dad his stepdad would work nights, right? So when me and Dave were in school, he was up during the day and he would take a nap or go to bed later in the day or whatever. And then whatever. So he would literally like, we come home from school and there'd be a map 
on on top of the NES. And Bobby, Bobby, can I stop you? I know, I know, you're so excited about telling this story, but you, you literally told the same story so last what? week. So what? So what? Not everybody listened to it. You can't. It don't matter. <laughs> so we would take the map, right? And yeah. we would continue off of it, or yeah. you know. But it was just awesome, man. Like that's how you did stuff back then, yeah. and like, yeah. so you got the benefit of like you could just look it up, and and it'd be no brain. That's why. Sho- that's what shocks me that you did not beat the game. I will be. I'll tell because, you what, right? Because the fact of, like, you're supposedly this huge Zelda fan, it's disappointing. The more I think about this, it's it's it's, it's horrible to think that you're a huge Zelda fan and you didn't beat the original, and it's so easy to beat now because you have all this all these answers right at your fingertips. You should be ashamed oh, dude, of yourself. Dude, dude. You should be ashamed of yourself. Dude. Did you beat Zelda? Uh, did you beat Zelda 2? Have you? No, of course not. Oh I my think, god! I, I don't dude. think I'll ever beat Zelda two. Wow, I'm shocked. I'm shocked. Why are you shocked? Because I th- because you're a huge Zelda fan. No, I thought dude, you were... dude, I've beat all the other Zeldas, or well, apart from Majora's Mask, I never beat that. That's a that's a hard game. I kind of want to go back and play Majora's Mask, but I don't know, man. I that game is is I love the technique. I love the the, the different mechanics with it. Yeah. But that, like you said, like when I played the original, I would kind of burn out. By the time I yeah. got to Majora's Mask, and I was like, when I played Ocarina, Ocarina in Time. I was kind of, by the time I got to Majora's Mask, I was just like, eh, whatever. I tell you what, know. though, right? Mm-hmm. I watched a video today or um, Game Explain. They did a comparison between the NES Mini and the Wii U Virtual Console. Okay. And they, they took three games. They took Super Mario Bros., Super Mario Bros. Three, and uh, Kirby's Adventure or, or something. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And um, it it's so incredible how bigger difference there is between the NES Mini and the Wii U Virtual Console. The, the NES Mini is so crisp, it's so okay. clean, like the audio is 10 times better than the Wii U Virtual Console. The brightness, for some reason, the Wii U Virtual Console is like half as dark, like everything's really toned down color-wise. And, well, and it's, a lot of that's the emulation. It is, and it's stretched weird as well. Yeah. Like. The NES Mini has three different modes. You've got Pixel yes. Perfect, you've mm-hmm. got 4x3, and you've got um, like CRT scan lines that yes. you can put on it. Yes. And it just, the Pixel Perfect mode, just it makes the Virtual Console on Wii U look absolutely terrible. Listen, like, you know, because you have a you have a new new 3DS, I do too, you've played with Pixel Perfect already. Yeah, yeah. It's on dude, the link to the you, past. Yes, if you haven't played a game in Pixel Perfect, you're missing out because yeah. it is legit. It's Pixel the definitive Perfect. way to like experience the game, and that's Excellent. why I'm I'm more excited now than I was before about the NES Mini. Because especially watching this video today, I was like, "This clearly is going to be the best way to play these games." Oh, now. Absolutely, absolutely, no yeah. doubt about it. And what I'm excited about is because of the HDMI. I'm wondering if like we can stream this stuff, if we can capture yeah. and all that. Like I assume we can, but I don't know with the Elgato. The Elgato is kind of wonky. I might have to. Figure it yeah. out, but, but still, like, if we could like capture footage off of that, it'd be awesome, man. Seriously, like, to do like walkthroughs and all that stuff, or let's plays of that stuff, like, it'd be awesome. Like, I, I'm excited for the mini, and I, that's why I got. And what the weird thing is, is like, I never expected a Famicom one to come. Like, and I don't know why I didn't expect it. I thought, like, okay, I think because I expected them to announce it all at the same time, yeah, because they didn't, and they did the one like months later. And it was like, oh, here you go. Yeah. Here, go check it out. Go have fun with it. I'm, I'm excited for them both. I, I definitely want them both. And if they continue, like you said, if they continue down the line, they do a Super Nintendo one, then a Super Famicom. I'll just keep buying them. Yeah. Now, now did, did the did the NES Mini come out in the UK yet to pre-order? Yeah, yeah, it's been available to pre-order for a while. Did you pre-order it? No, it's sold out. Oh man, I'm yeah, sure. I, I'm, I'm sure I will be able to get one. It's like I'm, I, listen i'll say right now i'm buying i don't care what it costs i'm getting it i, I gotta yeah. have it. it's, it's it's this is one of those things that like i just need it, it you know i part just of me, part of me wants to just hope that i get it for christmas from karina or something so i asked for an xbox one for christmas yeah yeah i was like i i'd I rather you're, you're joining the xbox crew man last night we was playing gta and yeah. christopher lugo pops yes. on the chat out of nowhere did he really like, yeah and he was like oh hey what's up dudes like and he was saying oh so you, you playing um gta like why don't you uh why don't you get an xbox one toby why don't you come and play with <laughs> us because he was like he's got it he's got gta on xbox and okay okay um 
all of his friends are on PlayStation Four or whatever. So he wants he wants to get a PS Four copy of it. So I, you know what, man, I, I don't know. I I feel like we. I said this to Tony. I said, look, we do this show to geek kids, and like I don't have any knowledge to xbox like i really don't i've never had one and now seems like the time that i definitely want to try like sean just put a review up about forza horizon 3. oh that game looks well good yeah man and i'm like i want to play this game bad yeah. you know what i mean and like that and like even forza motorsport 6 like yeah. i want to play that you know and so if i, don't I had know, to, if i had the spare cash and the spare time i would get one yeah and, and for me i'm not looking at it like like Okay, look, if it comes down to a matter of do I buy GTA 5 on the PS4 or do I buy it on – I'm going to buy it on the PS4 all day long. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I just want – there's games that are coming exclusively to the Xbox. I just want one, and I don't mm -hmm. have a computer that I could play these games on and stuff like that. So for me, that's where I feel like I'm going with this, yeah. and that's why I'm going that way. But um, next topic, written in by Greg Caldwell in the uh, in the – Nintendo Guru Facebook group, um, which I, before we get into this, I just want to tell people if they want to send in questions, we would absolutely love reader questions, um, reader mail, and all that stuff. If you want to send questions via email, you can send them to Nintendo Guru 8280 at gmail.com. Uh, you can tweet them to me. You can go into the Facebook group. You can leave a message there. You can direct message me on all those routes too. Whatever you want to do, we would absolutely love to get some uh, fan interaction moving forward. Um, yeah, I just I'm, think that I'm, I'm up for that. We get a lot on if we ran Nintendo and I, I feel like this podcast would be nice to open it up to other because we, you know, we'll take the Nintendo questions absolutely all day long, but we would like to get into other stuff as well, like the PlayStation. Like, if you want to ask Toby about his GTA adventures and how wonderful he is and how good it feels to get knocked off of a plank by Bobby <laughs> <laughs> on the bus. Yeah. Uh, but go ahead. Greg Caldwell asked a question about movies. Uh, yeah, so he thing. said he sent a message. He said, so I'm watching Xenoblade Chronicles cutscenes um, without gameplay, and I realized video game movies or TV shows can work. The issue is the actual gameplay. He says, whenever Shulk goes into battle, the screen fades to black. The show or movies uh, could definitely be fleshed out by mostly showing boss battles and a few random encounters sprinkled in. Video game stories like Xenoblade Chronicles can work. It's just the directors, for some reason, only think live action is the only option when animated would cut it would cut out so much of the live action issues. I thought this might be an interesting topic because video game movies mostly don't seem to work when they definitely can work. So he, he's um, of the opinion that, you know, uh, video game movies can be better and they don't always have to be live action. So what do we think about that? Um, all right. So I, I've been thinking about this a little bit, and I agree to some extent, but I feel like, I feel like movies – based on games are difficult ones that are very story driven you can't do a proper movie on a xenoblade chronicles i don't feel because it's it's more than one movie i feel like it's a trilogy would, yeah exactly something it's like that so movie. big and that's how i feel about last of us like last of us is an amazing video game movie like to me that's the ultimate video game movie like absolutely that could be but you're talking about 15 20 hours worth of like actual cutscene footage there's no way that fits um, you know uh, i mean? think i think um actually the opposite of that i think the naughty dog games like uncharted and last of us would work as standalone movies not animated movies but live action movies because i think they are so so story driven and story focused that you know you could just take the main cutscenes or the main um what what are they called like the the main events of the games like the the set pieces and turn those into big action scenes in yeah. movies so I, but I, I do agree that rpgs generally would be better as like two or three films i see but i think here's what i think i feel like xenoblade chronicles would be amazing as a netflix television series or something like that oh yeah because <laughs> Because you could draw the story out, you could do yeah. the story properly. 
I feel like a game like Mario Brothers or Yoshi or or Kirby or something like that, like you could take a one and done storyline. But I feel like stuff that has a big, huge story to it, it's very difficult to do something like that. You know, I feel like I would like to see, and, and I'm going to move into something in a second, something that just hit me now, but I would like to see the longer stories played out on television and something that's not so much a big story in a movie. Um, I don't feel like they have to be live action by by any means. I feel like it can all be computer generated. Like, look, if they tried a live action Mario movie, didn't work at all. Why not go to a you know a, a, an animated one? And you have I, studios out there that can do great jobs with it. Yeah, um, you know, I don't think it's just a question though of live action versus animated because there are animated films that aren't great, like. The Ratchet and Clank animated movie. I've not seen it yet, but it was critically panned. Like yeah, yeah. people said it wasn't, it was mediocre. Yeah. And there are two Final Fantasy animated films. Um, the first one was horrible. The first one, Spirits Within, was awful. Yeah. But Advent Children was Dude, really that's good. Amazing. Was really I good. I love that movie, yeah. So, it, you know, just because it's animated doesn't necessarily mean it gets a free pass. Like it still yeah. needs to be done well. Yes. Um, but there's um there's an interesting video. Um, you know Michael Pactor, the uh, industry analyst. He's a uh, he's got a YouTube series called Pactor Factor, mm-hmm. and episode thirty nine. Someone wrote in a question about video game movies, and they said, you know, um, why is it that most video game movies suck? Yeah. And his answer was um, because the the game studios that make the games aren't directly involved with the movies because they aren't making the movies they're licensing out their game properties and um the, it's down to the movie studio and like whoever's funding them to make the film so that's why we get all these terrible video game films because it, they're not made by the game creators like the game creators might have some input yeah but like you know that's what i say like don't expect Assassin's Creed to be exactly like the Assassin's Creed game, I mean, like the Hitman movies. Like I like the Hitman movies, but a lot of people don't. It's, it's because... the same. It's the same as comic book movies. Yeah, it's same as comic book movies. Why the comic books? Why are they so critically acclaimed? Why are they so huge? But then some of the movies flop. It's because it's not the same people in charge. Mm-hmm. Marvel now has it where a lot of the people that wrote the comics years ago have now transitioned. In, they've let the younger generation come up and start drawing and writing those books while they've moved on to tell the story in a different medium. And that's why Marvel's working so well. That's why I'm excited for DC now because DC's just shifted to that, where now Jeff Johns, who's written comics for years, is now focusing on, he's been focused on the television for a while. Television been banging at home every single year on for dc now he's taken into the movies so that's why i'm excited for dc now in the movies it's the same thing that's why movies in the past never worked like when you watched you know the original tim burton batman was good the second one started to get a little weirder but then as they went on they just got worse and worse and worse why because that was hollywood totally controlling that that movie mm-hmm. and i feel the same thing with video games like that's why nintendo after mario brothers they left completely because of that, because they felt like they got burned and they were like, we're done. We're out. And it was 20 years before they came back. Mm-hmm. Now they're starting to come back, but they, you know, they'll have total control over their stuff. Now there's no way they're going to let up the control on this mm-hmm. at all. And I don't know if you watched the Pikmin shorts that they did. No. So I think it was like two years ago now. Yeah. Miyamoto apparently did like four little Pikmin shorts and it was like five bucks. Yeah, yeah, I didn't watch them because you had to buy them. Yeah, I bought them. Yeah, I loved them. They were so well done. The animation was phenomenal. The storylines were cute. They were just little shorts. You know what I mean? It was not. They weren't these huge. Take them and put them in the beginning of the movie. You know what I mean? Like Disney used to do that, where Disney would have like these little animated shorts before the movie started. Well, you still get the Pixar films. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, um, I would love, um. You know, I would love to to, to to totally jump into this. It would be amazing. I, I, I but I like I said, I would like the bigger stories to be, you know, just more of a television based thing than than movies. Yeah. Um. And also, you got to remember that 
television and like movies is a totally different sort of format to a video game. Like a video game has player input and it has all of these different aspects that they have to think about game design, level design, like how the player is playing the game and how all the mechanics work and everything. Whereas a movie is a very passive thing, like you're just sitting there watching it and it is more about the story and the characters and stuff. So translating video game to movie is not as straightforward as you might think. Like there's there's a lot more that they need to think about in sort of transitioning stuff like that. Because you might think, oh, Zelda would make a really great TV series. But then you get into the sticky situation of like how much of Zelda is story compared to gameplay and will that gameplay, like taking that gameplay out, how is that going to affect the TV show? Like will it still feel like a Zelda? See, now what I would like to do with Zelda is this. I would like to just take the premise of here's a guy who is the chosen one, mm. the chosen hero. Here's a girl who gets kidnapped by an even evil villain or whatever and goes off. I would like them to do a different set, like different, maybe use the same actors, but you just change up the feel of them. Mm. I guess, but like, let's say they do a 22 episode, right? So at the beginning and the end, or maybe it goes to two seasons or whatever is one timeline. You know what I mean? Like this is Ocarina of time. Here you go. Boom. And then however long it takes to tell that story, if it takes two years, whatever it takes one season, whatever, then the next season they shift and they go with another setup. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. they're constantly evolving it. And, and moving it around and stuff like that. Like, I would love to have it that way. I would love to, like, even if they were to go, like, we're going super future. You know what I mean? Like, maybe we're going into this th this timeline, like, right now, present day, where maybe he's, you know, a detective or something. Like, they could do, and I know a lot of people are immediately going, like, no, that's horrible. Whatever. Like, but I feel like if they took it season to season, like, kind of like how they do with Doctor Who. Mm -hmm. where you have a doctor and that doctor will run for two, three years or whatever. And it tells his story and then boom, they move to a new doctor and it's a different set of stories. You know what I mean? But this, the premise is the same, you mm -hmm. know, you still have the same thing he's doing in a nutshell, but it's changed. You know what yeah. I mean? Like when they yeah. change the doctors, things change, different situations change. That would be awesome for me. Yeah. I could, I could see them like re like, uh, almost like you say, Doctor Who sort of regenerates as a different Doctor every few seasons. Like Link would regenerate as a new Link. Like the the hero is reborn, and it's a different style of yes. Link. Different... And that would be, I, I'm telling you, I would love, and I would like that to be live. I just, you know, when 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 they talked about it a few years ago, where they were like, "Hey, Netflix is working with Nintendo, and they're going to do a live action." Uh, Zelda, kind of like Game of Thrones, dude. Yeah. I was like, yes, yes, because I think first off, enough of the nonsense that Link don't talk. Just save it, save the BS. Let him talk. Let him do the do it properly. Okay? Exactly. They and, just, they just need to find the right person. You know, it could, as long as it's not like cheesy American, like you know, like the the old Zelda cartoons or whatever. That were like really cheesy. Yeah, here, like, okay, okay. I feel like it, it, you know, it doesn't need to be deadly serious like Game of Thrones, but yeah. I think as long as they do get the tone right, you know. Yeah, but here's the thing: those Zelda cartoons weren't cheesy at the time. No, and, and you know what? The animation is still really They're, good. The animation is really good. They're yeah. cheesy now because you're talking about a cartoon that was in the '80s. You show me one cartoon that wasn't cheesy back then, He Man. You know, Thundercats, all that stuff was cheesy back then. But the the difference is, is that now we're looking at it and we're going, because we hadn't seen it in so many years. And now when people go back and look at it, they go, oh, that's horrible. That's it's It wasn't horrible. Dude, I remember being a kid on Fridays, getting so excited to watch the Super Mario Brothers Super Show to see Zelda. Like me and my me and my cousins would rush home from school and sit around the TV and just watch it. And it was like, this is amazing. Now people want to tear it down, and it, that's nonsense because it wasn't bad back then. And I'm sure if you show it to little kids, little kids would love it. 
the problem is that you're an adult now trying to look at something. I'm sure 20 years from now, people go back and watch Pokemon cartoons and go, that stuff's corny. That is horrible. What actor would you get to play Link? I've always said Orlando Bloom. I was going to say that. (laughs) Because I I feel like he nails... You know, when I watch... Uh, Legend or uh, Lord of the Rings, those movies. Yeah. I totally thought that was Link. Like when I watch, I'm like, dude, he's Link all day long. Like that's just prototypical Link. You know what I mean? Like quick on the draw, fast, shooting everything under the sun. Like amazing. Like I, I yeah, I would totally see. Yeah. And I look if you want to do a movie, if you say like, hey, the television Netflix series don't work, give it to Peter Jackson because he's shown. I know the Hobbit movies were not critically acclaimed but say what you want about the hobbit movies i think it was just because he took a one book and tried to rip it out to three and make it a trilogy you know who would make a great link who michael Sarah. you're just saying that because you look like him <laughs> um, i don't i don't think so i don't think so. he's got the build no no nothing no get, pro, come- get pro jared to play Link. You just want someone that looks like you to be up there. So you can be like, <laughs> I, I could be Link. No, Toby, you can't be Link. It's not uh, going to happen. Maybe I could be Link. No, maybe you can't. Maybe you can't. We're not going to let that happen. You you could be um, Big Goron. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's not that's not nice. Oh, that's dude, these nice. Gorons are lovely. They're the best race. You, you're a piece of trash. I'm going to tell you that right now. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> So, so uh, that is all. Thank you guys for listening to us. iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, watching us on YouTube. It means the world to us. Seriously, follow us. Instagram, Twitter, myself, at Nintendo Gurus. Toby is at Toby's underscore take on Twitter, at Amiibo underscore workshop on Instagram. I'm getting. I'm not going to say two no more. We're just going Twitter because I'm tired of having to do. Me, I'm like, this, it's one, and you, I got to get one, two. <laughs> Well, why don't you ask me to say my own Twitter handles? Because like, you know, I don't want to hear you talk no more. By the oh, time I hit okay. the end of the show, like, like, that, <laughs> once I'm done, I'm done with hearing you. I, I don't like Sean to say his either because I'm just like, all right, I need to get it done. I need to get it wrapped up and get out of here because I know how you guys are. Mm. I'm long-winded enough. I don't want you guys. Yeah, you are long-winded. <laughs> so that you're is the, all. You're the didgeridoo of podcasting. That's uh, what you are. <laughs> you are. You're just, you will be with us next week. <laughs> that is all. See me later. Ciao. <laughs> Ciao. What is that? It's my new phrase. Oh, that's horrible. <laughs> horrible. <laughs>